About six months ago, I made my very first video about sexual attachments. If you have not seen any of my videos, especially the first one about sexual attachments, please stop this video now and watch that video and the second video in its entirety because I explain what sexual attachments are and I give a lot of ground information that you must have in order to understand what I'm about to share with you in this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the first and second video in the video description and I'm also going to pin it in the, um, the video thread section. So if you have not seen any of my videos about sexual attachments, please stop this video now and go and check it out. Now, if you are easily offended, if you're squeamish, this is not the video for you because this is the extreme version of signs that you or someone you may know may have a sexual attachment. So again, if you are easily offended, if you're sensitive, you should stop this video right now. It's not for you. Rest of you guys, listen on. The first sign that you or someone you know or may know of they have a sexual attachment is that they are sexually aroused by very nasty things. For instance, there are people who are stimulated and turned on by putting their face between someone's butt cheek and the person passing gas in their face. They're turned on by that. They get high off of that. There are people who are turned on by human waste, fecal matter, urine. They are enthralled by it. There are people who go into public restrooms to look for feces in the toilet to masturbate over. This is very true. You guys can look this up. When I was just out of high school, a co-worker shared with me a story of how his best friend, which I also know he was talking about himself too, his best friend was hired by a very successful lawyer who lived in the upper northwest part of Washington, D.C. This guy would hire a variety. They had to be young, they had to be African-American, and they had to be fit. He would pay them $200 a visit. This is what he would do. He would have them come over. He would put newspaper all on the floor. He will lay down on the newspaper nude and would have required that the young man have all of his clothes off. The young man's job was to squat over this man and defecate and urinate all over his body. And the man would rub the feces all over his body, the urine all over his body as he masturbated to a climax. And he would pay $200 to these guys for doing this. Another story, there's a guy that I knew of. He loved to get oral sex and he could only have an orgasm if the person would vomit on his penis. This is just not healthy. And it's a blatant sign of someone who is operating out of a very low vibratory state of consciousness. And when one is operating on that level, they make themselves more accessible to these lower astral entities and parasites who can only access low vibratory magnetic waves and fields and energy forms. So because foul odors and this kind of energy and behavior emit a very slow, denser wave of energy, this is what these parasites have access to. So they latch on to people who may be engaging in this stuff and these entities encourage them to keep doing it. The next sign is bestiality. People who are sexually aroused and attracted to animals, they call this zoophilia. I am very clear that some of us have animal genetics and animal genes due to genetic splicing and experimentations that had occurred thousands of years ago, but even still at this point in the game, at the end of a cycle, those of us who have not evolved beyond the animal nature or lower nature is still operating in a lower field of consciousness, which again 
is adjacent or connected to the lower self. Next is necrophilia. People who are sexually turned on and are aroused by dead people. You guys can look up and find stories where there are people who go into the mortician field so that they have endless sex and do whatever they want when no one is looking. Then you have those who are serial killers. The thrill of hunting and preying on a potential victim and killing them as they're having sex with them is a part of the rush. So there's a very concentrated level of low, slow, dense energy that is created and emitted from this. Now, beings who are usually into this or under this kind of influence, they're under the influence of some kind of entity. This is a greater powerful force. This would more than likely be one of these ancient, very, for lack of a better word, demonic entities. And here is why you will find people who are into these things. They always talk about a voice telling them to do it. Some of them believe it is God telling them to do these things or motivating them or pushing them to do these things. And some of them will outright tell you Satan or the devil. They will tell you that, yes, there is an entity or being that most of you guys see as evil and negative who's directing to do these heinous things. So again, I can't even guarantee that I can give any tips to help someone like that. Because that is someone who is, in my honest and humble opinion, too far gone. It's if these people become a physical manifestation for these entities. These entities are very, very powerful. So I don't know if any of my tips or any of the links that I shared would help anyone to break that attachment or an attachment of that nature. Last but not least, rapists. People who get a thrill out of violently taking and forcing themselves on someone. They are sexually turned on and aroused by the rape. Now, people confuse rape with sexual orientation. This has nothing to do with sexual orientation. This has everything to do with getting a rush from dominating a person and making them feel powerless and the terror and the fear that is given off in this state. So it could be someone raping a child, a woman, a someone of the same sex. It does not matter. It is the power dynamic that is charging one who has an attachment of this nature. And again, if you guys do some research, people who have been captured, serial rapists, they will often tell you that they will hear voices or hear a voice or something telling them or compelling them to carry out these acts. Now, those who are into role play rape, be very careful. Be very careful because what you are doing is making yourself a target for these entities to find you like a shark that smells blood in an ocean. You are opening yourself up as a potential target for these very powerful entities to come in and influence you to push beyond just role playing. This is also true for those who are into sadomasochism, meaning those who like pain and being tied up and brutalized for sexual release. Now, let me get into some tips as to how we can break attachments. Now, usually these things take years to occur or takes years to build up to so it's going to take some time to undo it's going to take dedication it's going to take consistency and it's going to take mind power will power all four of these consistently will absolutely help you to break an attachment so the first thing that I suggest is that make it up in your mind that you no longer want to participate or be a part of that which could be or is an attachment. For instance, if you're someone who has a lot of porn in your house, get rid of it. Get all the porn, magazines, all of this stuff. Anything that you have in your dwellings that feed into, that you use, that is a reminder of what feeds your sexual attachment, get rid of it. 
burn it. The next thing is reprogramming your brain with the will of mind or by way of will of mind. And you do this with affirmations. For instance, get in the mirror every morning, look yourself in the eye and state something to the degree of, I command all forces seen and unseen who is not serving my highest good to leave my space. You see what I'm saying? You can come up with your own affirmations or you can look up affirmations online that will help you to reprogram your brain and your lower human mind away from the pattern and the behavior, or shall I say the behavior patterns. Next, fast and do a full body detox. We should be regularly detoxing anyway because I don't care if you're a vegan, a vegetarian, if you eat meat, I don't care what you eat, how much you exercise. We all are being constantly exposed to toxins and parasites. So we should all be making a concerted effort to make full body detox a regular, normal part of our lives. Fasting should be a normal part of our lives because not only do we starve a potential parasite in other ways, but we allow our immune system and our digestive systems, our organs, an opportunity to reboot, so to speak. Now, this one may sound strange to you guys, but if you can go to a local sauna or a steam room, or if you have access to a sauna or steam room, you can literally make it so unbearable for an attachment to exist within your body and even within your auric field that they will have no other choice but to flee. Coldness is slow, dense energy. So if an attachment is operating from such a realm, heat or extreme heat is much faster, more fluid energy. So if you overwhelm the body with heat and sweat, again, make this a part of your lifestyle, you can literally burn off an attachment over time. Your body, energy, your alkaline levels, everything will become so intense that the attachment just would not be able to hold its place or sustain its position. Now, y'all with these major entities, y'all need an exorcism. I, I don't know what to tell y'all. People who have these things, they are way too far gone. They're knee deep in it. That's not really my lane. If there's anyone out there who have some advice for someone who has a very powerful ancient entity attachment, by all means, please leave it in the comment section. I'm going to link some other resources for you guys to help break soul ties or whatever. But again, the advice and tips that I gave you guys, if you take it and you repeatedly use it and make it a part of your lifestyle, all of them, you should be good to go. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening again. And please stay tuned for the next. <music>